Hello and welcome to the Pickle Jar. My name's Josh and in today's video I'm going to show you how to do a nice easy Martian themed bass. Pickle Jar! Pickle Jar! Miniatures! Excellent! Hi guys and welcome back to the Pickle Jar for another painting tutorial. Just before we get started, I just want to say that if you are enjoying the content we're putting out here on the Pickle Jar, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below, let me know your thoughts. And if you're new, please consider subscribing so you can keep up to date with all the content we release in the future. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a nice, simple Martian bass like I have been doing on my new Necrons. I've had a few people asking how to do this and it is nice and simple, so I thought I'd chuck together a tutorial and show you how I do my now, as a special extra bonus feature of this video, I'm going to be showing you two separate methods on how to make this bass. One is a cheaper version using easier to attain products that don't cost quite as much. The other is using some slightly more expensive methods, but it does give you a nice bit of texture on the bass. So you can pick whichever one you want to go for and whichever one suits your own style and your own budget the best. Without any further ado, here we go with the tutorial. So here we are, I have two bases that I've sort of prepped, covered the slots over with a bit of plastic card. And what I'm going to do is show you two separate ways of doing the Martian base. The nice cheaper way and then the slightly more expensive way. So we're going to start off with the cheaper way first. So anyone that's doing any kind of miniature basing will be very familiar with what we're about to do and that is just to add a nice layer of PVA glue all across the base, not too thin, not too thick, just spreading it all across so that there is a nice amount of glue for the sand to stick to which we are going to do very shortly when we dunk the base headfirst into the tub of sand. Now you want to press down quite firmly on this, make sure you get plenty of sand on, then you want to tap it off over the tub of sand just to get any of the excess off. Scrape around the edge just to make sure that you've not got any hanging down the side that's going to give texture to your base rim. And there you go. One base all textured up and ready to apply paint to once it's dried. Now that it's all dry, I then gave it a quick prime with a black primer and it was then time to start adding on some colour. So all I'm doing here is with a large tank brush, just going all over, giving it a nice covering of Tusco fur. Now this will give it the base sort of ready orange colour that you're wanting to get for a nice Martian base. You just want to make sure that you get the entire thing covered so there's no black remaining. We're going to add some shade back in later on. So you want to just make sure that this covers the entire base and gives it a nice, strong colour. Once that coat of paint has dried, it's time to give it a heavy dry brush with Troll Slayer Orange. Now this will brighten up the base quite a lot. You just want to stipple this on, dry brush it all over. Don't worry about getting the very recessed areas in the Troll Slayer Orange. It is mainly for the top, but if you do get the recessed areas in, it's fine. We're going to add the shade in later. Don't worry about it. This will give you a nice bright coat and then we are not far from finished with the paint on this one. Now that the Troll Slayer Orange is dry, it's time to start adding some shade back onto the base. So I am using the Seraphim Sepia shade. All I'm doing is dotting this on in a couple of areas just so that when this dries it'll darken them down and add some nice different turns on the base. Once all the paint is on and dry, it's time to start adding some of the decorations onto the base. The first of which that I'm using is the Autumn Moorland from Gatehouse Gaming UK. I'm using this because I think it looks absolutely fantastic. You can either use it to look like alien vegetation or some sort of like coral rock formations. Whichever you want to go along with, I think this looks really cool and it's something a little bit different than just using sort of tufts and rocks and things. The second lot of decoration that I am adding to the bases are the Alien Grass Tufts from Gamers Grass. These are absolutely fantastic. They are some of the only grass tufts that I've ever been able to use where I've not needed to add glue on to keep them on. They have just gone on and stuck and I have had no issue at all. I use a combination of the Alien Fire and on some of the other bases I also add in some of the Alien Pink ones as well. 
Now, as promised, I said that I would show you a slightly different method on how to achieve the Martian base. So that is what I'm going to do now. We are going to be using the Martian Iron Crust Technical Paint from Games Workshop. And we're using this instead of the PVA glue and sand that we used on the other version of the Martian base. All you want to do with this is just scoop it out using either a coffee stirrer or something like I'm using, like an old sort of green stuff molding tool thing um just spread it around the base you don't want to put it on too thick but also don't put it on too thin because what this does it dries it gives a nice texture but also the iron crust version is the one that gives the cracks so you've got some nice different textures on the base once this dries Once it's all dried and set, you can see that it gives some nice different textures on there. And all we're going to do is try and exaggerate some of these by once again giving a dry brush of Troll Slayer Orange and just stippling this on, adding this on. You want to be a little bit more selective than you were on the other type of base just because you don't want to cover it up too much. But you want to put this on and it'll really highlight those sort of raised up areas and the different textures on there. Once the dry brush layer has dried, it's time to add a bit of shade back in, once again using the Seraphim Sepia. All you want to do is go over the base with this, a fairly heavy wash, and all it'll do is go into the recessed areas and darken those a little, but also it won't dull the highlights of just in the Troll Slayer Orange too much, because it is a sort of orangey brown rather than a straight brown wash. Once the paint and all the washes and everything is dry, all I need to do now is add on the bits of decoration as I did on the other base. So I'm just adding the coral looking things, the vegetation and rocks and whatever, and adding on the grass tufts from Gamer Grass. All I'm doing this is exactly the same as I did on the previous base, adding a bit of super glue and then just putting these down where I see fit. The final step, and arguably the most important step for both bases, is to make sure that you tidy up the base rim. You can do this in whatever colour you want, I always use black, um, so but it depends on whatever colour you're wanting to do, but make sure you tidy up your base rim because there's nothing worse than seeing a lovely base and then seeing all the sort of bits of dry brushing that you've done or stray bits of colour or whatever. Just give it a nice tidy up, it really helps to finish the miniature off and acts as a border your miniature. Both the bases that I've created in today's tutorial I have actually gone on to use, one for my Royal Warden and one for my Plasmancer and I am happy with both of them. So there you go guys, that was how I make my Martian bases like I have used on my own Necron miniatures. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it useful and let me know in the comments down below which method you prefer, the cheaper option or the slightly more expensive option. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it useful. If you did, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below in the description. Let me know your thoughts. And if you're new to the Pickle Jar, then please consider subscribing so you can keep up to date with all the content we release in the future. If you want to see more content here on the Pickle Jar, we have a full tutorials playlist. I will link that in the top right hand corner right about now. And we have plenty of other content for you guys to check out if you so wish. If you want to help support the Pickle Jar, we have our very own merch store. The link is down below in the description and we sell t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, all that cool kind of stuff. If you want to help support us and you're not interested in buying any merch, then we also have a link down below where you can donate directly to the channel and everything we make from all these things goes straight back into the channel to help us create more content for you guys. 
If you want to catch one of our live streams, we live stream here every Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. British time on the Pickle Jar. If you want to get involved with picking what we're going to be painting on the live stream, then head on over to our Facebook page where we put a poll out every Monday, letting you decide what miniature we're going to be painting live on stream. If you've not got Facebook, then we also post the poll on our Instagram story. Speaking of live streams, you can also catch us over on the Chilling Wargamers channel. I host the show along with Spud and Elston. It's always a good laugh. The chat is always absolutely amazing. So make sure you follow the link below and check us out on one Thursday evening at 8pm. That's all from me and I'll see you next week with another video.